Hey everybody and welcome to the Bullshit Party! And guess what? It's Thursday again! So it's time to review the new podium vehicle, the Anis S80RR. And one poorly done transition later... We can get our first glimpse of the car in the sunlight. And for those of you who haven't seen my videos before, we're gonna be looking at the exterior of the car, the interior, and we're gonna be customizing it in Los Santos Customs. And the first thing of course we're gonna start with is the exterior of the car. And as you can see the S80RR is very distinctive looking. And correct me if I'm wrong but I believe this is the only car in GT Online that comes with a spoiler hold without a spoiler. Interesting. But I'm sure we'll be able to slap a spoiler on it as soon as we go to Los Santos Customs. As for the car itself, it took its inspiration from the Nissan R90C. And even though the Nissan is a full-blown race car, this one is in the supercar class in GT Online. The car came out last year, which was 2019, and for those of you who are curious, it cost 2.57 million dollars. In one quick interactivity check later, we can see that we can open both doors, the hood and the trunk of the car. This is my first time with the S80RR, and I gotta say, the level of detail here is very impressive. Will it justify though the 2.57 million dollar price tag? Well, only time will tell. But if this beautiful piece of forged metal in the back is any indicator, it definitely will. This is one of those cars that you either hate it or love it. I don't believe there are any people in between. And if you still haven't made up your mind, let's go inside and see how it looks. And the first thing that you're probably noticing is the first thing that I noticed as well is that the seat is in the middle. Great attention to detail and very unique in my opinion. But how does it sound? Okay, more on that later when we upgrade it, but first we need to get to Los Santos Customs. And as we start our journey of course, the first thing that we are gonna be checking out is if the car is rear wheel drive, or wheel drive or it's not gonna be front wheel drive, is it? And thank goodness, just like the original, it's a rear wheel drive vehicle. That's absolutely what makes sense for this car, but they have been some, let's say, questionable decisions that Rockstar has made in the past regarding the drivetrains of certain vehicles. And if you couldn't already tell, the car is extremely powerful. This is my first time driving it and the best way I can describe it is uncontrollable. The car has almost this bumpy quality to its ride, to where, even if you're driving on smooth pavement, just like I'm doing right now, the car is still gonna bump around. And this, in combination with the tremendous power the car has, is a problem. More often than not, you're just gonna go flying somewhere you don't wanna go. And it also has to be said that the turning radius is horrible. It sort of reminds me of the half-track in that regard. And speaking of horrible things, the brakes are basically non-existent. As you see in a couple of seconds, I was forced to make a U-turn instead of waiting for the brakes to stop the vehicle. And that spoiler mount on the back just looks so funny. And speaking of funny things, look at this! Apparently only a fifth of the people that are watching this video right now are subscribed to the channel. So I'm counting on the 16% to convince the other 83% to come and join the party. That was some Scott Steiner math right there. But enough about that, we are in front of Los Santos Customs, so it's time to go in and get customizing. If you've seen my videos before, you know that I always upgrade the performance of the cars first thing when I go into Los Santos Customs. So to save a little bit of time, let's just fast forward through that, but let me just say that going through the options, I saw a lot of interesting things regarding to the customization of this vehicle. And the first one we're gonna start with are the wheel arch covers. I don't really dig it, but I understand why it's there, it pays homage to what the original car is. As for the exhaust options, they don't really make sense in my mind since most of them basically look the same except for this one that I chose. And since we're making an educational YouTube video, it's time to go over all the liveries and check them out. As you guys know, I'm not a big fan of liveries, but some of those look good. Sadly, I'm not gonna be putting any liveries on, I'm just gonna go with the clean car because we need the car clean for the primary color you guys chose from this week's poll, but more on that in a little bit. In the meantime, we can admire the roof option and then go to the spoilers. I don't know about you guys, but I totally think this car looks absolutely naked without a spoiler on. And even though I believe that the Nissan this car is based on has a mounted spoiler, I'm gonna go with the carbon one because it's the one that I like the best. And next up we have the trunk option, which is in the front, so it probably should have been called the frunk option. In times like these, a laugh track would definitely be a great idea, but the budget doesn't allow it, so let's move on. You guys probably know that usually I like to go with a light smoke tint for the windows, but since we're going for a race car, I decided to go with the limo tint, cause why not? Something that should be mentioned here is that the stock wheels of the car come with custom tires. I really like how the custom tires look, so this is definitely something that I'm gonna be buying once we buy the rims. And another quirk that this car has that you probably didn't notice is that it doesn't have a license plate. 
As I keep saying, the inspiration for the S80RR is a full-blown racing car, and the level of detail there is much appreciated. And now the time we've all been waiting for, the time to respray the car. And let's take a quick look at the poll from this week, and the winner is... Uh... So we're gonna be making our already red car a little bit redder. But apparently a lot of people don't like the color red, even though almost half of you voted for it. So I'll tell you what, leave a matte color that you want to see in next week's poll in the comment section down below. The top 5 comments that have the most likes will be picked for next week's poll. So this one is entirely in your guys' hands. But back to this car, we're currently choosing the secondary color. And because we weren't able to select yellow as a pearl scent color, because classic colors don't have pearl scents, let's just do it for a secondary color. And as for the wheels, this is gonna be our finishing touch. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of color-coordinated cars. So I'm gonna do this. And with that, it's time to go out and see how this car behaves on the street. And this is how the car looks in the sunlight. Let me know how you like it in the comment section down below. Rate it between 1 and 10. 1 being horrible and 10 being, well, pretty cool. As you can hear, the exhaust knot has definitely shifted. And I can clearly hear the wind of a turbo, which makes the entire car sound fantastic to me. Does that mean that the car is any good? No. To put it simply, the problems that the car had going into Los Santos Customs are exaggerated. It's very difficult for me to describe exactly how this car feels, but I'll try my best. When it has grip, it almost feels like an open wheel class car. It just sticks to the road and does exactly what it's supposed to. The problem is that the car is very unpredictable to what it's gonna grip. It's not as simple as running the curb and the car loses grip, no, not at all. As you can see, I'm going through curbs, I'm going left and right like a maniac and the car is stable. But if I try to go through that exact route once again, chances are that the car is gonna behave in a totally different manner. I don't understand the physics behind the car, but I'm sure I'm not the first person noticing this. And speaking of not being the first person noticing something, I'm sure a lot of people have complained about the brakes on this thing. The brakes were horrible when we went into Los Santos Customs, and now, when fully upgraded, the brakes feel absolutely the same. So to make a long story short, more powerful engine and the same brakes equal not a very good time. I don't think I'm missing something here, I just think that the car has a big flaw. The unpredictable traction combined with the horrible brakes makes this a very difficult decision for me. Is the car worth it? Let's look at things objectively. If you're thinking of paying 2.7 million dollars for this one, my advice is save your money and look elsewhere. There are a lot more better and more affordable cars in this class. But if you're watching this video in the week it was released, then this is the current podium vehicle. And if that's the case, I would have to say that this car is worth it, just because of the way it looks. I can absolutely see this car sitting in one of my garages and me admiring it because it is a masterpiece when it comes to looks. And the level of detail in this car is very impressive in my opinion. For example, how each shock absorber moves when you go over bumps. It's just awesome. But the car isn't very fun to drive and sooner rather than later, the inevitable happened. And I think with that, it's time to end the video. Thank you so much to everybody who watched, hopefully you found this video somewhat helpful or useful, and if that's the case, please consider giving this video a like, it really does help out the channel a lot. Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, and I'll catch you in the next one. On second thought, let's go back.